Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me today in a brand new game that we'll be checking out on the channel, The Bookwalker Thief of Tales. Now, I'm excited for this game for a couple reasons. One, it's a new game for the channel, and two, it's made by Do My Best Studios. You can see it down here in the left corner. They are the same people that made The Last Station. Absolutely love that game. We played it on the channel. We played the DLC on the channel. Highly recommend going back and checking that out if you haven't seen any of those videos yet. Really good game, really good story. And while it wasn't a heavy action game, uh, I felt like I, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people on the channel really enjoyed it. So let's go ahead and hop in here into the book walker. Now I played the first five, maybe 10 minutes, just to make sure the audio and all that was good. Uh, so let's go ahead and start ourselves a new game. We'll click yes here and see what this has to offer. All right, here we are. Finally, I'm home as we are here in this apartment building. You can hear a, a baby crying over here to the right. Some stuff going on to the left. Let's go check out this eviction notice mm -hmm. here. So it looks like first my property gets confiscated, now an eviction notice, eviction notice. Uh, and it goes into a bunch of stuff. Older adults are more likely to experience treatment related death than younger patients. Um, do, 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 do. Basically, we're being evicted, and you can pause the video here if you want to read all that. Uh, older adults with AML. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's is that acute something lymphoma. I don't know. I can't remember. I, I know that's some sort of cancer, blood cancer. Anyways, looks like we got a note down here in our mail slot. Uh, Mr. Etin Quist, this is a reminder that you may begin working off your sentence at any time by registering with a licensed publishing agency. In the event you work off the full sentence, you will be released from the shackles imposing writer's block on you. Any other attempts to remove the shackles, other than those provided by the law, will be considered a violation of your sentence and will entail consequences. Your sentence will be re-examined with aggravating circumstances. City Writers Police Department. All right, so... Uh, Guessing we have some sort of shackles on us. Can we see anything? No, oh, not really. So we don't want to mess with that. And we got a phone call already. Hello? Silence. Is this a teen? I, I think I'm pronouncing that. Uh, who is this? And you are? Vince asked me to get in touch with you. It's about your arrest. We usually offer a small loan to writers who have their license revoked with interest. Once you get back on your feet, you can. That's not why I was trying to find you. I wanted to know. I've heard you can break writer shackles. Is that true? Breaking writer shackles is one of the most highly punishable crimes under writer's law. Let's say we can. However, the price for this service varies based on the complex, how complex the shackles are. Are yours the standard two-year kind? No, my shackles are on for 30 years. Dang, I spilled. Hey, hey, get this out of here. My God, 30 years. I think we can figure something out, but let's say the price will be, or but the price will be, let's say, six jobs. That many? But Vince said that it'd be a one-time thing. Vince should have warned me that he was sending me a particularly dangerous criminal. Have you done this kind of work before? No. Do you know what to do? Yes. Good. Your first job is waiting at the door. Okay, sounds like that person's running away. Before we answer the door, let's explore our apartment here. The bathroom is locked. I have to pay the water bill. Looks like we got a newspaper down here. Independent bookstore letter by letter has announced that it will no longer sell any of Actine Quist's work. The store's owner, Ramon Fuquas, Fuquas commented, Unfortunately, Mr. Quist's writing license has been revoked. We sincerely apologize to his fans, as Mr. Quist's books enjoyed a certain popularity. I do hope that Mr. Quist can solve the problem he is facing, and that we'll have his books back on the store's shelves as soon as possible. All right, so it sounds like we're being blackmailed or blacklisted all across the, the city, and here's our, uh, here's our first job. So let's go ahead and grab that. Big old suitcase. Love it. I need to put it on the desk. Let's go ahead and drop it down here. Ooh, I like that B there on the, the upper right, or I guess the lower right, from the view we're looking at it. 
Wow. Number 3,125, Potion of Immortality. Immortality. The contractor agrees to infiltrate the book. I hope I want to read that. Uh, the contractor agrees to infiltrate a drop of infinity by Jonathan Bowers and extract an item, a bottle of the magical potion of immortality. The client agrees to pay the negotiated sum upon fulfillment of the contract. All right, and who's this, the author? Looks like it. Nice bearded gentleman, giving you kind of Mark Twain vibes. And this is an excerpt from a book review. I like that the narration was from the point of the view of the book's supposed villain, but the characters finding it against him just aren't interesting enough in comparison. I also enjoy the ending, sappy as it is, or was. Okay, what's this? Alright, so that's kind of like a pressurized, temperature controlled vault. Alright, I'm not going to click on the book yet. Uh, let's go back here. A little satchel there or something. I don't know who Frederick is, but they didn't take the portrait of him. Mm. Nothing but empty boxes. What do we got here? Ah, our bedroom. Not uh, not the biggest of bedrooms, but it's a bedroom nonetheless. Mm. Neighbors across the way moved out recently. And dude, bed, okay. So it sounds like we're gonna hop in the book, huh? All right, let's go ahead and click on the book and get going here. Into the drop of immortality. Or the Potion of Immortality, whatever the book's called, I can't remember. I guess I have short-term memory loss. Oof. Crunch. Ow. Landing on solid stone floor makes your bad knee twist awkwardly. Leave your knee like it is, or I can use ink to heal myself. Um, I guess let's use some ink to heal ourselves. You reach down and touch your bad knee. You start visualizing the ink flowing into the injured joint and healing it. A sudden icy cold feeling seizes your wrist. Ow! I forgot about those stupid shackles. You examine the metal bracelets around your wrist and the writing etched on the surface. Now I'm just as weak as a plain old character. You're unable to heal your knee. Leave your knee like it is or we can force it back into place. All right, let's go ahead and force it back into place. You take a deep breath and sharply wrench your knee to the side. Crunch. Ouch. You bend your knee this way and that a few times testing it the crunching sound has stopped phew anyways let's get down to business i need to find the potion of immortality and take it out of here all right so it looks like we lost a health bar doing that got some mushrooms back here we can loot uh oh here's our inventory i like the artwork on the inventory screen very nice back out of that uh nothing but bones left no potions well of course they're not gonna have the potions right in here uh we got some crowbar parts we can take I doubt the potion mortality is just going to be lying around in an ordinary barrel, but I guess we can go ahead and kick the barrel. Watcha! And what do we got? An apple and some trash. So I guess we can, eh, we'll take it all. Let's see what it says. Trash has some ink in it. We, I'm guessing at some point we'll be able to use this stuff to uh, fill up this bottom bar down here in the bottom left. And we got food for healing, crowbar parts. Okay, nice. Uh, steel helmet. I guess let's take that helmet as well. And we got two heads. Whoa, two heads. This is a really weird jail. All right, anything else in the room we can explore? Not really. It's locked. A lock pick sure would come in handy right now. I can kick it or step away from the door. Pretty sure I had a lock pick or something like, or like one at least. I need to go back to reality and check my apartment. So hold the return to the real world. So it looks like we can go in and out of the book. And we're back in the apartment. Uh, um, there it is. We got a lockpick set right there. Let's go ahead and grab our lockpick. All right, and here's a lockpick. And let's hop back in. Ooh, I like this transition. I like the the tunnel of words and in the pages and whatnot. All right, so let's see if we can pick this lock. Use a lockpick. You slowly test all the pins and lock with your lockpick until you finally hear a click. Open the door. All right, let's get out into the hall. Ooh, and we got a body there. He's dead. Your gaze travels up to the wound on the walker's temple. That looks like a bullet hole. The capsule around the dead man's neck starts vibrating, and you hear the soft voice coming from inside it. Nice one, Sherlock. Um, 
examine the capsule? The capsule looks more like a cage with a little door. It's dark inside. Who are you? Sorry for interrupting you. You were saying something about my partner here? Go ahead, continue. Oh, we got a little snarky guy here. He's your partner? We were on our first job. <laughs> Didn't end well. I'm sorry, hang on. Who are you? A character? Yes, I think so, sir. But you know that you're a character. Of course. That's impossible. You try and use the light to illuminate the contents of the cage, but all you see inside is a scrap of paper. That's what all my past partners said, too. Past partners, how many have you had? I don't mean to brag, but apparently the walkers were very interested in my abilities. I fetched a considerable price, and quite frequently, too. But then I ended up with a partner who died. Right. Fortunately, I was then found by a new partner, and we started working as a team. Hmm. Wait, are you calling me your new partner? That's correct. I'm sure we'll work well together, sir. You look at the walker's body again. Uh, we'll take our new partner along. Why not? I'll hang you my, around my neck for now, then figure out what to do with you later. Wonderful. I'm back in business. All right, so is there anything else we can loot from this guy? No. All right, so a quick look around. Looks like we got a key down here at the end of the hallway, a couple cell doors. Ooh, we got some signs we can read. Um, stare down and an exit to the block. I'm going to say this key is going to be hot if playing video games has taught me anything in my 30 years of existence. Um, but we're going we're gonna to try it anyways. You see a key laying on the metal grate surrounded by clouds of searing steam. Um, let's touch it with a finger. The key burns, burns your finger badly and you yank your hand back. The motion jostles the key. Ouch! The key falls down through the grate. Faint clink echoes from down below. Why did you do that? How was I supposed to know it would be hot? You could have asked me. I've already read the book cover to cover several times. What do you mean you read it? You can see the text of your own book? This isn't my book. Okay. But wait, so this means that you know everything about this place? I can find anything you need to know in the text, and I can also warn you of traps or dangers. You turn and look at the dead walker, if that danger is described in the book. All right, so you know where to find the portion of immortality I'm looking for? Yes, it's in the alchemist's pockets. And where's the alchemist? You rub your burned finger. It's in the laboratory to the south. Great. We can forget about the key. I'll go straight to Alchemist. No need to waste time. Well, you might want to do that, my friend, but I want to do a little exploring. Name, Brian Little. Potion tested, Gigantus 1. Result, proportional growth. Client, the kingdom of Surator. Military use. Production volume, mass production, 120 potions every six months. Well, let's see what this Brian Little looks like, and he's uh, quite a big fellow. Uh, we got some barrels we can loot. We'll take those coins, of course. Some small barrels with uh, papers in them. Let's go look at the skeleton here. Dang, he's big. His name was Brian. Did you know him? No, but you can read about him on the sign in the hallway. Sure, next time I'm here. All right, well, I already read that. And it looks like we can loot this barrel. We got some more crowbar parts and rags. Uh, let's go ahead and move these barrels out of the way. And then let's move this one out of the way. Nice, and looks like we got a strange, strange cable. There's an ordinary power cable running through the hole in the wall. Hold on. What's a power cable doing in an old-timey jail? That's the book's big twist. I didn't want to ruin it for you. All right, well, let's, uh, let's feel where it leads. The cable extends far into darkness. What's back there? You have no idea. Uh, I could pull it out. Looks like I might be able to get some pliers here soon. Okay, let's go get some pliers before we uh, start ripping our unknown power cables out of the wall. Uh, and since we have this apple, we'll eat that and get ourselves healed up. Got some papers here, too. All right, let's go to the next cell. George Hamstelfer, or Hamst Hamsterfell. Potion tested, Eater 12. Uh, a mutation that allows the subject to consume almost all known materials. Anonymous client, personal use, production volume, one unit. All right, well, let's see what we got going on in here. Got some stuff that looks like it's been munched on. Take those crowbar parts. See what this bed has to offer. The bed and mattress have been chewed straight through. We got a chain here. The chain leads down somewhere. You could use something heavy as a counterweight to raise whatever's on the other end. Well, we'll use the prisoner's helmet. Bring that up. And what do we got on here? An empty bottle and an apple. We'll take both of those. Anything else in the room? No? All right. Let's pop on out of here. All right. And go into, let's read this sign here. 
Uh, Maxim Benderston. Uh, Rosette 16. Uh, partial restoration of limbs, but full immortality still not achieved. No data, no volume. All right. So a smash skeleton. We got a crack in the wall here. Uh, they clearly didn't want him running off. All right, let's check these wooden crates out. Some crowbar parts and an apple. Uh, and let's see what this crack in the wall has to say. Uh, you're standing in front of a cracked brick wall. Put your ear to the wall. Dead silence, but something tickles your ear. You feel the slightest hint of air current flowing through the crack. There's something on the other side. This is a sledgehammer job. I agree, but there's no mention of one in this book. Are you sure? I've read it five times already. I'll go back to reality and find one then. Oh, you must know someone outside the book who has a sledgehammer. I mean, I can ask my neighbors. Not sure they'll be happy to see me, but... My last partner was always complaining that he had no one to turn to in reality. That was pointless to go there for help. That's kind of sad. Um, anyways, I'll be back soon with a sledgehammer, I hope. All right, let's go back through the cool transition here. And back into our little apartment here. I doubt we're going to have a sledgehammer, but like you said, maybe one of our neighbors. Um... What do we got? This is a kitchen. Um, kitchen's still a work in progress. It's been months. Let's, uh, I hear some vacuum. Someone's home. Oh, they can't hear us over the vacuum. Fine. Oh, wait. Did they turn? Nope, it's still going. All right. And we got a cabinet. Let's check this cabinet here. Hmm. Previous residence. Okay. So just a bunch of stuff. All right. Apartment 15. Excuse me. Are you home? Silence. Let's wait. Silence. Um, who's that knocking? I'm your neighbor. Would you mind opening the door? I need your help. Yeah, right. I'm no idiot. Get out of here before I call the police. All you unsavory types hanging around. I just wanted to ask you, do you happen to have a sledgehammer? A sledgehammer? Yes. There's this stubborn nail I can't hammer in. What kind of nail is it that you need a whole sledgehammer? It's a really big nail. It's a really big nail. Nothing but a sledgehammer will work. I just need it for a few hours. I promise I'll bring it back safe and sound. Dang, fine, let me go look. Lots of noise. Here, just don't break it. That is a beefy sledgehammer. Thank you, kind sir. All right, so let's hop back into our book over here. And away we go. And all right, knock the wall down with the hammer. Bam! The hammer slips out of your hands a little, and your blow just glances off the wall. You sense a stare hitting you from the capsule around your neck. You don't want him to start laughing at you. Boom! All right, so we knock that down. You uh, you hit the wall more confidently this time. The blow smashes through the wall, widening the gap enough for you to squeeze through it. So looks like we got uh, something back here. Alchemy ingredients, a shelf. Let's check out the shelf. We'll take the burnt paper and we'll take the salt. This looks like an alchemy ingredient. Well, we are looking for an alchemist. All right, so we could, let's go down the ladder here and see what we got down here. The crematorium, oh, there's our key. Uh, okay, workbench first, we'll work our way around. You see a worn out old workbench. You can make tool, tools here if you need to. All right, uh, I guess we can't do anything with it yet. We got an urn of ashes. Some barrels over here. We'll take those crowbar parts. Take some plants. Let's read the note. Uh, Greg, it seems the alchemist has sped up work on his potion. The corpses are hitting the floor one after another. Stay for the night shift tonight. He promised to pay double. All right, well, let's go retrieve this key here. Uh, the key is in front of you, laying on a grate again. Taking it should be no problem at all. Do I even need this key? It opens the front door, which is the only way up. So you need it. Um, I feel like there must be some kind of catch. I'm not sure about this. You gently rub your burn finger through your glove. I can check the text if you want. Are you sure it's cool now? I mean, it was so hot not that long ago. Well, let's ask for help. All right, can you just check just in case? Of course, I'd be glad to. You roll your eyes. Hmm, here it is. The key is not hot. You should be able to pick it up just fine. Great. 
As soon as your fingers close around the key, a wild howling echoes up from the depths of the jail. Your hand shakes. The key, as though waiting for the opportunity, falls out of your grasp and down through the grate. Bah! Who the heck is that? It's better you don't know. All right, well, uh, let's go through this door over here. Boiler room upper level. We got a barrel we can explore. We'll get those crowbar parts. Small barrel over here. Rusty pipes. These pipes lead down to the lower boiler room. Well, we'll be heading that way soon. We got a hatch. Well, we got this thing we can move. Looks like there might be, ah, more crowbar parts. Let's check out this hatch. Uh, the hatch leads down to the boiler room. Do you have anything you can use it to pry it open, like a crowbar? Uh, we could use our lock pick. So it's telling me I need a crowbar. Uh, where am I supposed to get a crowbar? They don't just leave crowbars lying around in a place like this, you know. The last room had a decent looking workbench in it. You might be able to cobble something together uh, resembling a crowbar there. I'll give it a shot. All right, well, let's go back to the crematorium and see if we can make ourselves a crowbar. Uh, we need a crowbar, right? It shouldn't be hard to make at this workbench. So we already have the lock pick. We've got, so we got to find tools to make the crowbar. Looks like we can also make the pliers to cut the wire we saw and a bottle of ink, which is an empty bottle and a hundred ink. Uh, so we could extract all the resources out of this. Nice. We got a hundred ink. So let's go ahead and craft that bottle of ink. Guessing that kind of, that's like our stamina I'm imagining, and this is our health. All right, back out. Let's check our inventory again. Sledgehammer, rags, lockpick, that, 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 and uh, some green salt. All right, let's go through this door over here. See what we got. A lot of cages. Um, okay, let's go check this barrel out. Take all those parts there. Anything else in this room? Rusty cage. Some bread, piece of metal, we'll take all that. Door. All right, up the stairs we go, or the ladder, this says. Watch out! Huh? Did you hear that? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. So we got our first combat here. Okay, looks like we're fighting some sort of spider creature. Uh, choose a skill. We could slash it. Does two to three damage. Costs 15 inks. Ink. We can drain it. Does one damage. Or we can stun it. Uh, one damage to all and it costs 30 ink. Well, I guess let's, uh, let's slash it here. Two to three damage. And it's probably gonna take a swing at us now. Okay, it does one damage. Let's, uh, slash it again and finish it off. Very nice. You were amazing. Thank you. Are you all right? Did that thing frighten you? No, I'm not. Uh, you tried to appear unaffected, appear unaffected. I've seen more of those spiders than I can even count. I just don't quite understand what's a giant spider doing in this book. It's not in the text. Uh, it's an ink eater, you shudder. They're found in books, but they're not part of the plot. The older the book, the more likely you are to run into them. Why do they look like spiders? Apparently just to scare, mm, ah, mm. They can actually take on any form, even human form. You shudder again, more intensely this time. Let's not think about that. I hope there aren't any more in this book. Well, they're probably going to be because that's what happens. All right, let's see. Prisoner helmets, how many people have been here? So we got the main entrance. We can go door to the cell blocks. I wonder if this is the other door we saw. It is, nice, okay. So we've already explored that. Uh, we got some papers down here we can look at, and then a cell door over here. Uh, musty papers with an unintelligible writing on them. All right, and then we, I'm guessing this is the this is the exit. Locked, of course. I could try and pick it, but we'll wait for that key. So let's go through the cell door here. Uh-oh, we got ourselves a, a prisoner. Um, a lot of bullet holes in that wall back there. Some papers. Let's go to the open case. Whoa, this is not an old timey prison. What the? I told you about the big twist in this book, right? Hold on, where's the alchemist? Is that him on the chair? No, the alchemist went upstairs while you were busy digging around. Fantastic. All right, well, let's do ourselves a little exploring here. A gun case, missing a gun. Papers, 
Test subjects and result of test number 26. Subject 124, deceased, 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 deceased. So this must be guy 128. Let's go back here and look at the shot up wall. Bullet holes in the wall. All right, prisoner. I can hear you walking around. Is that you again? You jerk. I'm not drinking any more of your crap. Come on, untie me. Hey, uh, let's examine them. A division t-shirt full of bullet holes. Hmm. What does that tell us? If that's a band, I've never heard of them. Forget the band logo, the holes. His shirt's full of holes. Uh, they tested a potion mortality on him, so he took the shirt off a dead body. Finally, come on, untie me. Uh, we could remove the bag. Uh, let's just say hi. Who the hell are you? You're not the alchemist. Are you his assistant or something? I'll show you, just untie my hands. Get ready for a world of hurt. The prisoner tries to break out of his shackles, or more precisely, he pretends to try and break out of them. It seems like he's more afraid of you than you are of him. The alchemist is long gone. I'm, on, I'm here on my own business. What other business is there here? Why don't you just set me free, huh? How did you end up here? Why is your t-shirt full of holes? What band is on your shirt? Um, let's go with that. Uh, what do you think? Someone kidnapped me. What's the last thing you remember? Hmm. I was at a bar. The cathedral, you know it? No. The owners paid a hell of a lot to have the guys from Reversi recreate St. Bernard's Cathedral. Nowadays, every jackass with some cash wants to recreate something. The prices there make your eyes water, but how many chances do you get to drink in a cathedral that hasn't existed for a thousand years? What kind of beer do you drink? Uh, let's get back on track. Were you with anyone? Were you alone? At first, yeah. Then some guy came and sat with me. The alchemist? Nah. Probably someone working for him said he was a scientist from some college or something. I don't know. Uh, that's all I remember. Then I woke up here. Uh, let's ask about the holes. That asshole shot me. The alchemist? Yeah, the alchemist freak. He was going on and on about all this weird stuff. He talked like he was from the Dark Ages or something. I couldn't understand most of what he said. So what did he do to you? He gave me some nasty drink. It tastes like... Ever tried Orange Bowl? Uh, no. Well, it tastes a lot like that. Was that just product placement? Uh, did they get paid to put that in the book? Come on, focus. Anyways, he forced the potion down on my throat, or down my throat, and then he shot me. I'd never pain like that before. Uh, it was like my whole body was, he shot you. You look at the shell castings, casings on the table with .47 caliber bullets, but you're still alive. Hmm. Guess that never occurred to me. So I can either remove the bag or leave without saying anything. Let's go ahead and remove the bag. Are you sure that's a good idea? Why not? I think your appearance might scare him. He'll get over it. Take the sack off. Uh, leave the sack where it is. Yeah, we'll take it off. You slowly unwind the rope and you pull the sack off the prisoner's head. Just don't panic. Oh my God. What the hell are you? I warned you. Hey now, calm down. I'm a human just like you. Well, almost. Are you an alien? No, I'm a writer. But that's not important right now. Don't distract me. Um, let's ask him about the band. No idea. Took it off some guy. Well, we're going to go ahead and leave him. Goodbye, friend. Uh, where are you going? Don't leave me here. Walk faster. So we got a work table we can visit. Get the crowbars and tools. Nice. So we should be able to make our um, crowbar. Get some blue sulfur here. This might be useful. Looks like there's a ladder, but we can't get to it right now. Let's go check out this work table here. We'll take the bottle and the apple. Anything else we can explore? Open case, shot up wall. All right, let's go this way. Back to the hallway. And then we'll go downstairs and go to that work table in the crematorium and make ourselves the uh, crowbar. Open that up. We still need to make the wire cutter so we can go back up to that one room and uh, cut the wires. All right, so let's go ahead and craft the crowbar. Nice, so we still need to make the pliers. We need one more piece of metal and one more set of tools. So we need to be on the lookout for that. All right, so let's go back to this hatch. Uh, all right, open it with the crowbar. Nice, now let's go down the hatch. Got a skeleton, so we got our metal. Uh, furnace, there's something in the furnace. It's a crystal. Stop with the spoilers already, I wanna find out myself. Fine. Uh, your arm definitely won't fit through the bar, so I could use the crowbar or I can use some ink. Well, we just used the crowbar. Let's let's use some ink. You let a drop of your blood ink 
fall onto the bars. This tiny portion of the world is now under your control. Are you sure it's a good idea with the, to use ink with your shackles on? Ah, the shackles start burning you with cold, but you finish your work before they can do any damage. I can handle it for a little bit. You pull the bars apart with your bare hands. The bars move easily, bending at your will. Take the crystal. Uh, you'll never believe it. There's a crystal in here. Isn't that something, Roderick? You grin, looking down at the cage. Huh? Roderick? I've decided to call you that. It has a nice ring to it. Excuse me? I have my own name, you know. But you said you don't remember it. I never said that. So do you know what your name is? It's definitely had an H in it. Letter H in it. Hugh? I'm not sure. I don't like the name Hugh. You're Roderick now. Maybe I would have been better off staying with my last partner. All right, well, let's continue out of the boiler room here. And into, ah, there's the key. Easy goes. All right, you see the key lying on the solid stone floor. There's no grate for it to fall through this time. Something feels off. From here on out, I trust no one. Not you with your little book or anyone else. Yeah, we're gonna pick up the key. Take a deep breath. You slowly carefully pick up the key from the floor. You suddenly turn your head looking all around for signs of disturbance. The room is still and silent. You finally have the key. It's covered in ashes and quite cold to the touch. Well, you can never be too careful, right? And most importantly, we can now open the front door. All right, so what else do we have to explore here? Uh, more lights. All right, so let's, what the, again? So it's not a real jail? It's real, but stop, no spoilers, fine. All right, let's check this bucket of ashes. We got a ring we can take. Looks like this ring didn't melt in the crematorium fire. Some boxes over here we can explore, boxes down here. Uh, containers filled with ashes. What are these boxes? Bullet casings, a note. Greg, I saw someone in the crematorium last night. Either a thief got in somehow, or one of the alchemist immortality experiments worked. In any case, be careful. All right, let's check out this barrel. Pieces of metal, some trash. I think we're still looking for tools. We need the tools to make the, uh, the, the wire clippers. What's up, you sensing something again? Yeah, whatever's up ahead is not pleasant. If you have anything you can use to heal yourself, I would do that now. All right, uh, got it. Let's eat an apple, shall we? Um, we're up full health, about half stamina. And let's go through the store. Lower level storage, letter. An old letter. All the stored jewels and food shall be given to Victor or Victoria of Brahmin, daughter of Esmond III, within three days. Alchemy Master Alexander of Mitia. All right, well, let's go check this chest out. Up. Oh, we got some spider friends, very nice. All right, idle hit hit. So we got these two that are gonna try and hit us. Uh, let's go ahead and stun. We haven't used stun yet. Nice. And they all took one damage. Stun, stun, stun. Idle, hit, hit, hit. Okay. And then let's drain 30 ink, do one damage. Uh, two to three damage, 15 ink. Let's go ahead and kill this one behind us in case we need a run, maybe. That one's going to take a swing at us. This one. Okay, back to us. Drain 30 ink, one damage. Um, all right, nice. Get a little ink back from this guy. He misses. He hits us. Um, all right, let's do one more to him, get a little more ink back. Let's see what this guy does. He hits us. All right, let's slash him. He's gone. So we took a little damage. Let's see if we can get some stuff from these ashes. Some paper, some coins. Let's get these ashes. Anything in the crates. The crates are empty. Everything was stolen long ago. Crates back there. Those are empty. We got a little chest here. No right chest among the ordinary wooden boxes catches your eyes. You grab the lid, but can't lift it. Hmm, I think it's locked. Well, then let's use our lock pick. The lock is simpler than you thought it would be, and it opens almost instantly. Tools, jewels, and an empty bottle. Nice. So we, we should be able to make that that lock, uh, or the wire snippers. What were the, um, is that jewels? Oh, nice, 30 ink. Uh, Prices to the characters in the book, use this to almost anyone else. All right. So let's go back this way. Oh, fallen ladder. Hold on. What's this fallen ladder do? Uh, goes up to the top floor. Oh, ladder up. Let's. Oh, okay. So now we're in the lower hall. So then this should be the crematorium, right? Nice. Head over to this workbench here. 
And let's make those pliers. We'll craft those. Go up this ladder. And then it was this back cell, right? And then I think we got to go out the front door after we do this. All right, strange cable. Let's well, clippy clippy. Yeah, we already did that. All right, use the pliers to cut the cable. You cut the cable, it sparks and hisses. Continue. What are you doing, sir? Leave the cables alone. Some lights flashing out that dark window. Uh, the light in the window went out after I pulled the cable. Strange. Um, oh, I wonder if that was supposed to kind of be like the hint that this is... Well, we did all that potentially for naught. Let's just check out some of these other rooms. No, about the same. All right, let's go. Let's go out the cell block, and we're gonna go up to the main door here. And then here we go, main entrance door. Unlock that. Key fits locked perfectly. About time. And there we go, out the door. Uh, anything in the barrels? We can check these barrels here. Uh, barrel is labeled supplies ingredients for Alexander of Mitia lab. Mitia's lab. Okay, nothing there. We got an exit uh, and a door. Let's go to the door here first. And looks like we're in the lab laboratory. Let's check out his work table. Files, flask, powders. Let's check out this other one. And it's not what it seems like. Surprise, surprise. Ah, so where's the alchemist? See that hole in the wall? He left the jail while you're playing around with the key. He's now on page 84. Darn. You should probably hurry or there might not be any potion left for you to deliver. What? Is he planning on drinking it? You told me no spoilers. Oh, right. All right, so we got a workbench. Let's check out this other work table. Just a bunch of pile of alchemy ingredients. His bed, a laptop, a workbench. Anything else different? No, we can't do anything there. I could extract all this stuff if I wanted to. Sure, is that going to get me 100? 137. Let's we'll craft another bottle there. All right, and then let's go to the cauldron here. You see an alchemy cauldron. There are various containers and books scattered around it. Judging by the smell, the last person used this cauldron was making highly corrosive acid. Uh, let's read the alchemy recipe book. Uh, there are bookmarks all throughout the book. A uh, guide to making acid. Corrosive acid. Green salt plus blue sulfur plus red lead. Order unknown. Uh, let's read the other notes. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Notes on salt. Never start with salt and never end with salt. Okay, so salt goes in the middle. No, it's on sulfur. Uh, lead before sulfur means you'll suffer. So sulfur, s sulfur, salt, lead. I think that's what it's trying to tell me. Uh, let's go to the lead, straight in the eating way, the most page. All right, so sulfur, salt, lead. I think, I think that's what it's. Um, sulfur, salt, lead. It worked. You made acid. Nice. Nicely done. Yeah, thanks. All right, cool down. Uh, the acid's ready. There's nothing more we can do. All right, let's go check out his bed. Uh, the new man looks like no one slept in it. Let's go move this ladder. Metal beam. All right, let's slide that off. Ladder goes down. And then let's, well, let's go to the puddle acid first. Uh, someone melted the wall with the caustic acid. It seeped across the floor and there's definitely no way through. All right, laptop. Uh, laptop, do you know how this works? I've come across them in books before. They're not complicated. Examine the desktop. Wallpaper of an ancient portrait of a woman. Caption underneath that says, Victoria Bromsky, daughter of Esmond III, Bremen Museum, 1201. The only thing he has installed is a browser. That's it. A what? Doesn't matter. Open the browser. There's only two tabs open. First tab. Bremen burial sites, 12th century. He's looking for an ancient burial site, one to be exact. The grave of Victoria Bromsky. Brahma... Brominski? Brominski. Uh, she must have been his lover. So that's where he went in such a hurry to go resurrect her. That's why I keep telling you we have to hurry. But I mean, I wouldn't really mind letting him reunite with his lover. We don't have time for that. Second tab. Emails between him and his boss from a month ago. He was trying to convince them to give him a gun. He said it would make it easier to see whether or not the potion of immortality was working. Reading... For it was hard indeed, spilling blood with a blade. A most trying and foul business. How practical of him. So let him use a gun in his experiments? Since there's no way to escape the laboratory, I imagine his bosses didn't see a problem with it. You mean there was no way to escape, right? You look at the melted wall. Well, all right, let's see what his search history has. 
uh, online driver eds classes, plus a whole bunch of chemical names. To be fair, chemistry was uh, has made great strides over the last thousand years. All right, let's leave. So I think we can now go back out, because that just goes down to the one storage room or whatever that is, so we probably don't need to go there. Let's go out this exit, jail storage room. And we got a skeleton, no head, some barrels. We'll take all that. Let's see what these barrels have. Smell like oak and wine. Well, I could take a sip of wine. Block passage. Feel the wind blowing through the cracks between the bricks. It looks like someone walled off the entrance to the lab from the inside. Uh, we'll use our hammer again. And through the wall, very nice. So we got a cell door, uh, a note. Let's see what the note says. An old note. Uh, Alexander of Mitia, the royal alchemist, has committed a brazen crime. The scoundrel brew, brewed a potion for the king that he promised would grant him immortality, but it was in fact a poison. I declare that the alchemist shall be beheaded and his diabolical lair shall be walled up. Advisor to the late King Esmond III. All right, so it sounds like the alchemist uh, killed the king. The passage is blocked. Okay, through the cell door here then. And looks like we got an assembly area. Nothing to explore. I guess we'll walk in here. And we got some lights. There's our exit. Uh, some materials we can explore. Uh oh. Shoot, we should have healed. We should have healed. Big old spider. Um, I guess let's go ahead and stun. Yeah, let's stun. And then it should be our turn. Hit, hit, hit. We're going to heal. And then drain. Let's drain this first guy. Get ourselves a little ink back. Miss. Hit. Okay, he does one damage. Let's drain this one as well. Get ourselves some ink back. Nice. Almost full ink get hit again he's got five um so let's stun and then can we eat let's eat get some bread in us and then we'll slash nice only one left all right he's gonna hit us and then let's drain him very nice down goes that big spider ha 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 what a good way to overcome your fear of spiders fighting against i told you i'm not afraid of spiders you notice that your hands have stopped shaking well, in any case, now I'm definitely not afraid of them. Where do we go now? That metal door over there. I'm guessing that's what our acid is going to eat through. Random bricks and planks. We got some blueprints over here. Plan for rebuilding the jail from a simpler details to the most complex. Let's see what the, ooh, ashes. We gotta do our ashes. Take that, take that. Let's do the lockers here. Some pieces of metal, some more of that. Some more ashes here. I think the rest of the room is good. Nice. All right. Uh, the door leads outside. There isn't even a lock or anything. How am I supposed to open it? It only opens from the other side. They had no intent of letting the alchemist leave. Uh, so I could try the crowbar. I could hit it with the hammer. Or we could throw some acid on it. Caustic smell fills the air. The papers on your head slowly shrivel and curl up. Well, if it worked for the alchemist, it will work for us. Let's do it. Pour the potion on the door. We're not going to sniff the bottle. Uh, you spill the contents of the flask over the door. Layer after layer of metal starts sloughing off and dripping onto the floor. Impressive. Now let's get out of here before we're swimming in acid. Okay, but... Ooh, bang, bang, bang. That sounded like a gun. Did I just hear gunshots? Yes, and they were close. Hurry. I'm guessing that's Alchemist stuff making his great escape. Uh, Research Institute hallway. Um, door, exit. Let's go to the door down here first. We should, oh, we should have healed. Shoot, please be no combat. Okay, uh, Research Institute Director's Office. Let's um, eat an apple or two, get ourselves back up to full health. Got a monitor, we got some folders of paper and a dead man that we can examine. Stack reports, dead man, a head wound. Okay, uh, let's see what his monitor says. Uh, the computer monitor is splattered with blood, but you can see an open file under the stains. I want to see what this is. I'd advise you to hurry, we'll lose the alchemist. Um, let's read the hat written document report date. 43145 progress on potion a1 portion of eternal potion of her eternal life attempt 344 conducted by the alchemist yesterday was unsuccessful the subject's body has been destroyed we only have four subjects left we're going to have to put the research on hold for roughly two months the alchemist has stopped obstructing the progress process i think he's getting close to the report ends there uh looks like they thought he just hand the potion over willingly i advise you to hurry we lose the alchemist all right let's open his emails Three new emails, the rest is all spam. Invoices from Reversi. 
Uh, final invoice for all work performed between January 2042 and August 2045. Uh, near uh, atomic environmental restoration for Project Jail. Total area, 3,519 square feet, $14 million. Near atomic human restoration. Sample severed skull, 1403. 47 resurrection attempt, $18.3 million. Uh, they tried to resurrect the alchemist 47 times. Jesus. He cost them a pretty penny. Uh, email to investors. Reading. Rest assured, everything is going according to plan. Yes, reverse these services end up being more expensive than you expected due to the additional attempts to reanimate the alchemist. But you'll recoup these expenses in full. We've already reconstructed the jail. The rest is simple. Wait for the alchemist to rediscover the recipe for the potion of immortality. We are currently working to accelerate our access to human subjects. Hmm. We should have seen it coming. Evil rich men who want to live forever. It's a pretty tried theme, tired theme, even for a book as old as this. I can't disagree. All right, and then the chief of security. I understand how important this laboratory is, and I can assure you that John has my full confidence. He was a security guard for Billery head office, and before that was my personal bodyguard, so I literally trust him with my life. P.S. About the new door between the science office and the testing facility. I assure you there's, not, there's absolutely no way to open them from the inside. With the locks like these, you'll hardly need John. Uh, and that was it. All right, well, let's go chase after the alchemist here. Down the doorway or down to the hall. Okay, let's go this way through the exit. More gunshots. Oof, go, go, go. Come on, catch them, catch them. Let's go. Put a little pep in your stuff. All right, we got a dead body. We've got some papers over here. Visitors, uh, do, 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 do. A dying guard. I'm guessing this is John. Uh, all right, out the door. Onto the city streets. That was him, the alchemist. Are you sure? Yeah, after him. Come on, we could take that taxi. Let's see what this taxi has to say. Hurry, follow that car. Uh, the driver gapes at you in horror. Damn, you should have really picked a different appearance when talking to people. We don't have time to change our appearance. Ugh, oh, we don't have time for this. Uh, we'd steal the... Seal the car. Hang Roderick over the mirror. Hurry, follow the alchemist. Let's roll. And away we go. All right, we got our crash cars. We got the alchemist. Let's go over here and talk to him. So he crawls towards the entrance of the cemetery. It looks like the crash broke his leg in two places and his arm. Almost there. The alchemist continues his slow crawl. He needs medical help right away. His leg is broken and, oh no, I don't have time for that. You walk up to the alchemist and start rummaging through his pockets. You can't just leave him like this. I'm not here for him. You find the potion or the potion bottle in the right coat of his pocket. Uh, right pocket coat. I don't know, whatever it said. I'm here for this. You hold the murky potion up to the light and examine it. Well, that's done. Victoria. I, I'm not Victoria. My name is Etienne. I'm going after... He's talking about his lover. I'm almost there. The alchemist stubbornly continues crawling his way towards the cemetery. His lover is none of my, none of my concern. You do realize that if you take the potion, it'll disappear from the book forever, right? He succeeded in resurrecting his lover so many times, over and over again, every time somebody reads the book. And the cycle will be broken. This son of a gun literally killed dozens of people for the sake of his experiments. But he's still a human being. He's a character in a book written by someone. He's not alive. I'm sure there's enough of the potion to go around. My orders are clear. Bring back the potion. Not half a potion or a third or anything like that. But your orders don't say anything about it being full, right? I'm not risking failing this job just to save a fictional character. You do understand that the alternative to what I'm doing right now is literally 30 years of hard labor, right? Not every writer survives that and, that, and those that do almost never go back to writing. That's what I have to look forward to. And I say that we should at least, you shove the cage into your pocket, with, which muffles Roderick's voice. All you hear from him now is faint grumbling. That's enough from you. I don't intend to lose what I have for the sake of a character. I can risk it all and split the potion in half or take the whole potion. Oh, no, we're we're a good guy. We want to be a good guy. Let's, let's split it in half. Are you sure this is a good idea? If I try and trick my client, he'll terminate my contract. And then I definitely won't be writing for the next 30 years at least. 
Roderick mumbles something from your pocket. Split up the potion. Yeah, we're splitting it. Fine. You stride over to the trash can and find an almost empty soda bottle inside. This will have to work. Pour out less. Oh, we're pouring out. We're not drinking it. Uh, you pour the rest of the soda out onto the ground. You pour half the mortality potion into the empty bottle, which is still sticky from sugary soda. Then you give the original bottle back to the alchemist. As you're about to hand the potion over, your bad knee makes a horrible cracking sound, much louder and stronger than before. Crunch! Damn, you suck in a breath. The bottle tumbles out of your hand. Time seems to slow down. Watch out, a choked muffled cry from inside your pocket. The potion continues its flight and you fling your hand out, but there's no way you'll get there fast enough. The potion bottle makes a clink sound as it lands, in the alchemist, lands on the alchemist's head. Ow, it clinks again as it bounces off him and flies back up to your hand. Ooh, caught it. What the heck? You hear grumbling from your po pocket. That's not how physics work. Ooh, I guess I should probably see a doctor about my knee. You finally give the other half of the potion to the alchemist. The spark returns to his eyes and he reaches up to take the potion with a trembling hand, the one that isn't injured. Sorry, for you know. He doesn't seem to hear you. Leaning on the wall, he makes uh, slowly makes his way towards the cemetery gate. All right, so it looks like we're done. Drop of infinity, the potion of immortality. And we're going to put the potion in there in our soda bottle. <laughs> Very nice. And it looks like we can uh, close it up. All right, that gets pressurized. I'm assuming it's also temperature controlled. Get our little suitcase here. I think the courier, courier is waiting for me downstairs. All right, well, let's take this downstairs. Oh, we gotta take our sledgehammer back to our friend. Down the stairs we go. Assuming through this door, we got some apartment doors over here. Storage lockers over here. Did you get the item? Yes. Put the briefcase in the doorway. Do not step outside the door. All right. Ooh, such anger in that. Here's your payment, we'll be in touch. Nice, little, little cashola there for us. I need to get some sleep now, I'm exhausted. Uh, we're not gonna knock on that door. Let's just uh, take a quick second here. There's a phone ringing in this hot. But there's a phone ringing in there, oh no. All right, well let's check out the locker. I need a key, it's locked. Mm -hmm. Random junk, okay. Well, let's go back upstairs. Let's see if we can give our sledgehammer back. No, he doesn't want to answer that, okay. Is that our phone ringing? That's our phone ringing. I wonder if they're telling us we uh, messed up. Hello? What did you deliver to me? The potion of mortality, just like you ordered. No, this is half the potion of immortality. And it's an old soda bottle to boot. I just thought, but it's still the potion though, right? I just wanted to make sure the alchemist could. You're fired. Ooh. Dang. Well, sounds like we done, uh, we might have messed up there a little bit, but we kept the book intact and I can, I can sleep better as the, uh, this book walker thief here doing that. Well, that seems like that should be a good point to end the episode. We did ourselves uh, what looks like the first mission of this game, and I, I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys did too. Let me know down in the comments if you liked it or not. Uh, obviously, I'll probably keep playing at least another episode or two's worth. Uh, you know, Let me know what you think about the video, the game, me, anything like that. I always love feedback. We, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for coming out and watching this Tooth and Scrubs video, and we'll see you in the next one.